to your house tonight with glad and thankful hearts for the many blessings that you bestow upon us. Father, we thank you for your great plan of salvation and for your son Jesus who died in our place for our sins and gave us freedom. Father, we also thank you for the blessed Holy Spirit who leads us and guides us in all truth. And Father, we thank you most of all for all of your mercy and tender kindness to us and the bountiful blessings that you so richly give us. Father, tonight as we pause in your, pray, in your presence, we'd ask that you would help us to send you fresh and new in our lives this evening and that we may be grateful and that we may praise you with our voices as well as our actions. Father, we thank you and we praise you and we ask that you bless this service and we'd ask that you bless this the messenger and the message as well to our hearts. Help us, Lord, to apply it to our lives that we may live to glorify you. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs>
is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gain or gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which to day is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added. And let us sing together hymn number five, three, four. Thessalonians. 
Uh, many as you know, these are my favorite verses. Fifth chapter, starting with verse 16. Rejoice always, pray constantly, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Thanksgiving, as a holiday, we've celebrated it on and off as a nation. People have celebrated it on and off for years. It's very similar to many of the Jewish feasts one of which we were hearing a little bit about tonight from Deuteronomy. But we tend to think of Americans and Thanksgiving starting with those who came over on the Mayflower and had that horrible, horrible experience of somehow making it through the first winter and getting through that first summer and actually making some friends and having something to be truly thankful in the situation that they were in. But believe it or not, that's not the first English Thanksgiving in the United States. The first that actually occurred in Virginia, Jamestown, in 1610. A group of 409 settlers headed into that first winter as the ships went back to England. By the time spring rolled around, they were praying for any kind of deliverance. There was just 16 left. The survivors were praying, hoping for any sign, trusting that God would provide them deliverance even though they didn't see any possibility for it. And sure enough, the ship arrived, filled with food and supplies from England, and they gave thanks. A prayer meeting was held to give thanks to God. Come a long way, haven't we? Food. We've got food, don't we? We got food now. We can mass produce produce food in so many ways. We cook food and show them in so many ways. There's food channels, there's how you do it shows on food. There's guys who have to go everywhere to find the spiciest chili or the strangest bug meal. <laughs> <laughs> We got food everywhere in our land, don't we? And yet, for some reason, we seem to be a land that we can take that food for granted. We see the people of New York City and of Maryland and Pennsylvania and New Jersey, where that superstorm just came through, and we see what it has done to those areas. Without electricity for weeks, some are still out today. Yeah, we live in McClure, so we know if the wind blows right, we can be without power sometimes. Yeah, but in all honesty, we kind of depend on this stuff pretty regularly, don't we? It's wonderful to have it. Yet, how many times do we say, thank you, God, when we flip the light switch? The majority of our culture seems to live lives with an attitude of entitlement. I know the thankful people in our community are here tonight. Okay? Because, I mean, no matter how thankful we are to family or friends or this or that, if we're not thankful to God, we're asking for those blessings that God just gives out upon us and that so many times we take for granted to just be yanked right out from underneath us. Spoil rotten little brass. For some reason, we feel we are entitled to better pay, better benefits, more stuff. Food will always be in our cabinet. And that's one of the good things about this community service. One of the byproducts of this service is the fact that there will be food in community cabinets. There will be people who are able to get things at the store like milk and Eggs and cheese, those things. That, you know, let's face it. You know, I, 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 I'm really thankful I was born in the United States. Okay, I like our food selections. I like our choices. I like the fact that I was born into a home that, you know, what? Any time I came in, I could open the refrigerator and there was something there to eat. Or I could open the shelves and it had food in it, and I could go. Ooh, I'll have this today. Can you imagine opening the shelves and only finding cans of beans? Every day, every meal. I'm 
thankful would we be for that? But we should be, shouldn't we? Yeah, we've become a little iffy that way as a society. Our society speeds up quicker and quicker and quicker and quicker. I can't take time out for that. I can't do that. I can't do that. I gotta be here, do this. I gotta be there, do that. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta. That's what Thanksgiving is about. That's what it used to be about. You know, it used to be Black Friday, okay? And Black Friday did not encroach on Thanksgiving. The stores closed so everybody could be with their families. Now, when we seem to be that the bottom line is we've enjoyed so many blessings that we just come to expect that it's going to be flowing forever and ever. You know, I know the retailers make, make all their money during the Christmas season so that we can have cheap places to shop the rest of the year around. I get economics, okay? I get basic retail, no problem at all. But wouldn't their employees be happy? Wouldn't their customers be happy if they seriously took a day off and just spent it with friends and family? Someone was asking me, I can't remember who it was, but I've got my big plans for tomorrow on. They're big plans. I don't want these plans robbed from me because these are big plans for me tomorrow. Plan on waking up and playing with my grandson for a while. I plan on filling my stomach and his stomach till neither one of us can move. We're going to try to see which one of us has bigger bellies tomorrow afternoon. And then I see us taking a nap. And then I see us playing hard again. And then I see us eating again. That's my hope for my day tomorrow. And if I can have a day like that, I can't imagine a more thankful, more grateful way to spend the day. So this thing's not gifts, is it? Family, friends. Those days where, you know, nothing else is expected of us. All we're expected to do is just be there. But God is in it. That's the way we tend to run our lives most of the time, isn't it? God, we want you here. We want you here for when that big thing comes up. And oh, by the way, God, do you know this verse tonight? I'd be thankful in all things. And sometimes I have problems with that thought. But I want you right here. Just, just be right here. It comes as gratitude. It comes as truly never taking for granted those things that God provides for us and puts in our lives. The unthankful heart is what Henry Ward Beecher writes about. The unthankful heart discovers no mercies, but let the thankful heart sweep through the day and as the magnet finds iron, so it will find in every hour some heavenly blessing. When we pray the Lord's Prayer, do we truly mean thy will be done? Or do we really mean our will be done? For me, the lottery be nice. You know, job with more money, this or that. More money, less hours. You know, more money, less responsibility. You know, all those things that we tend to think could make life better. But the phrase is give thanks in all circumstances. This is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. This past Sunday, I talked a little bit about this you. Could have been written as everyone, but it's not a plural you. It's an individual you. It means that God knows us individually. He knows, knew us as we were knit together in our mother's womb. And he gave us the breath of life. It's an amazing thing. All the more reason we should be thankful to him, right? It's a very good thing to have. I, mean, I, I like living and breathing again. You know, I like to play hard. I like to work hard, too. But I like to give God thanks. Now, in all circumstances, it can be a hard thing. But it's not for all circumstances. Okay? 
You know, I'm not thankful when that something drops on my foot, okay, and I have to hop around for five, ten minutes and then eventually start getting back to walking. Okay? I'm not happy when that happens. But you know why I am happy that I was able to be walking around in the first place? Matthew Henry, who does a commentary, I said, those of you who heard this Sunday, and I'll share it again today. He was right. And he wrote into his diary that night. Well, I didn't really want to be wrong. But all he took was my mind. Which really wasn't much. I could have been killed. It could have been much worse. And what I'm most thankful for is the fact that it was I who was wrong. He said, I was doing the one I mean. Gratefulness comes from having a truly thankful heart because we have the proper perspective on what God's will for us in our lives is in the amazing ways he's blessed us. A truly thankful heart changes our lives. And it's actually, if you listen to these verses, it's kind of said like a requirement, isn't it? Rejoice always, pray constantly, and give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Paul realizes that God uses difficult times to strengthen our characters, to strengthen our faith, to strengthen our lives in ways that, well, let's face it, if it's all good, it's all good, right? Everything's okay. We're going to get there. We're going to do it all ourselves. So I then think we can look around and see the room so empty tonight. Because we tend to have so many of those people around us that they'll handle it themselves. I'll be okay. You don't have to worry about me. Don't tell me about that. I'll be okay. I got it. Me and God's got a deal. Well, Thomas Merton, who was a Catholic monk, wrote, Gratitude takes nothing for granted. It is never unresponsive. It is constantly awakening to new wonder and to the praise of the goodness of God. Anywhere else in the world. Our 
lowest level of living here in the United States still exceeds the highest standard of living in 95% of the world. It's amazing. The great portion of the world looks at the United States and all it sees is great wealth, great food. They see, oh my gosh, can you imagine going to the grocery store and not having five grams of vegetables to choose from? Oh, I'm sorry, I mean five plants to choose from for each vegetable. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine going and maybe not having green beans for another three or four months or corn for a couple of months or meat? Meat? Sometimes you might get some meat. If we encounter, if we as people from the United States encounter a situation that causes us to fight our bells, if our standard of living has to change, we get upset because we're being denied the American dream. Do you know what this land was supposed to be founded upon? Family fathers weren't developing this land and, and going through the struggles that they did just to get themselves away from more taxes and a repressive government and that. They were basing a nation upon the gospel of Jesus Christ. We were the light upon him. We were the light <coughs> that gave hope that can actually let you live and worship God. That's why we have three or four churches in our community instead of one that stands over us and says this is how it will be. Because we were going to be a people that loved God and that gave God his due. Said today, it seems like we tend to be more and more like people who think the world owes us a living. The bottom line is, if we don't give God things, if we don't give God praise, He will pull our blessings from us. It's just one of those things. It is up to us to give thanks, to give praise. That's why we sing hymns. So the Psalms were written to give thanks, to give praise. And that's why we gather together as a community. But I want you to remember tomorrow as you're sitting down. Remember, it's those people that sit across the table from you. It's those people that you wish were sitting across the table from you that can't be with you this year. Remember, it's the things that God has placed upon your table. And the fact that it is God who holds that very table up himself and you and your life and your family. Keep that in mind. And as we sing our closing hymns tonight, remember that thankfulness as we sing, as we give God the praise and the thanks for what he's done. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise and all the amazing ways that you have washed over us and cared for us. We ask, Lord, that you allow your spirit to reign in our hearts so that your gratitude or that our gratitude for you will just be appreciation. That all of our days will be a spontaneous expression of your love and our thanks. Allow it to be continual, not just occasional. And help us to give you thanks for all the ways that you may find the good. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. I didn't bring my paper with me. I imagine you guys can see it on our side. But let us uh, sing our next, next hymn, How Great Thou Art.
and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but also in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And let us pray together the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you always with favor and give you peace. Amen. And let us sing in 409.